is John T for the Boxing Voice, and I'm joined this evening by welterweight contender from Essex, Jamie Robinson. How are you doing, Jamie? I'm good, John. Yourself, mate? I'm really good, mate. I, uh, I know you've got a big fight coming up this week, and I think uh, Monday's the start of fight week, but I think you've been training today. What is it, a bit of light training or some sparring? Yeah, just, just sharpening up, um, just ticking over, making sure I'm maintaining the weight and that. So, yeah, just just keep knocking them calories off and yeah, um, sharpening up. I always like to do free free sharpening up days so like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and then I like to have the day off before my weigh-in and then weigh-in on the Thursday box on the Friday so I have two good days of rest before I fight so nice like so- sort of what I did sort of something what I've always done I would like, I like to have a nice rest mm-hmm. last chill out it's like a ritual you do the same thing you get used to it it's good mate so what does this next week look like for you because as I said it's fight week obviously it's different from normal for you I think you've got to go into a bubble so when have you got to drive up to Bolton uh, we're leaving at seven o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Um, I'm on the MTK takeover as well on Wednesday, so that's, that should be good. Ah, nice. But we'll get a bit more exposure like yourself, so you, you'll give me a good exposure. So, yeah, good uh, good to get out there, isn't it? Excellent. Yeah, I think you uh, last week I was speaking to the lads in the hotel, some of them in their hotel rooms after they got there. I think you get your jab or you get checked, sorry, and then you've got to wait 24 hours in your room or whatever. So make sure you're stocked up with, well, don't take too much goodies because you've got to make weight, but... Uh, Netflix probably will be needed, I'd have thought. Yeah, I've got my PlayStation ready to go. I've got my headset. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just play a bit of Call of Duty, just chill out nice. couple of films um, and then FaceTime a couple of my people and just, have, just, just keep busy. Like, just, yeah, I don't know. They, they won't bother me either. I enjoy my own space as well sometimes. So. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Good. Well, look, it gives you a chance to relax, as you say, before the hectic Thursday weigh-in and Friday, the big fight night. So, look, talk about your career so far, if that's OK, because the first time we've had you on. I think you're up to 10 wins now. I think you've been beaten four times with a, just a one draw on there. But you seem to be on a roll at the moment, mate. You've won the last four. So what what did you learn from those couple of losses you had sort of like midway through your career so far that's made you pick back up again? Yeah, when I um when I first turned pro, I just felt like I was just too young. Um, I, should, I, I sort of followed suit in two of my friends, what um Adam Etches and Scott Jenkins. Their gym, gym what was about was only a small gym, and they decided to go pro. So, for yeah, I would turn over now. Um, I, I, I boxed Robbie Barrett in my foot in my debut. He was in his backyard. Like everyone thought, I won it, but a draw on the road. I was a way for I didn't really know have a clue what the pro scene was about. Um, didn't really have a good guidance at the beginning of my career. Um, and then I got put in with a journeyman. Um, I had a really bad decision, but they, they made me cut my weight down to like nine stone 12 on the day. And like I'm a 10 stone fighter the day before the fight. So um, to be cutting that weight and then fight on the day, after like three rounds, I was gassed. But at the same time, I was winning the fight. I thought I won the fight like all four rounds and they give him well, literally I think it was like a point uh, in the interviews after and that he was saying like he's been on the end of bad decisions he agreed with but basically it was a bad decision the boxing board they had a meeting the week before with him told him if he didn't win the fight in, in like the next couple of fights that he would lose his licence coincidentally I was the next kid to fight him and he gave me a bad decision and then from there I ended up boxing a kid called Fergus Taylor I thought I had the fight a lot of other people did. When I was walking to the ring, I was expecting him to be in the ring. I found out I sold like 200 tickets. I found out I was the away fighter when I walked into the ring. I was thinking, like, basically, like, when little things like that happen, it, it sort of knocks you for six. But I still thought I won the fight. I, I, I thought I boxed his ears off. Um, so I thought I was I'd done by two by two. Uh, I had a little break. I come back. Uh, I had three good wins, um, two knockouts. And then a box of teeth, Shafiq, which should have been like another two more fights. Dave Caldwell could have waited a little bit longer and said, like, like let's build it into something bigger. They, but me being me, I'll, I'll fight anybody. I'm not really too bothered. And um, yeah, I jumped in the ring with a teeth that night. I sort of, sort of messed up at a weigh-in where um, he's a nervous fighter. He's a very quick fighter. So when I, as soon as I jumped on the scales, and I, I'm quite an aggressive person, naturally quite a, like aggy person um I, like it's very personal to me so obviously it was everything from it comes from the heart um when i stuck it on him um when he jumped in the ring i thought jesus he's gonna be quick i come out i put i had a perforated eardrum the week week before the fight uh, my last bar literally i just caught a cup in it shot it caught me around the ear perforated my ear i ended up boxing and uh, the first punch that landed he dropped me so i got up i thought well like it took me four rounds to fill my legs I thought the, the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth, I won. Um, and I thought he won it by the knockdown point. 
And then uh, off the back of a boxing loss, I got chucked in with Dean Byrne, who's a very, very experienced Irish fighter. Um, so I've sort of got, I sort of didn't have no luck getting put up, like, I sort of got told to like swim and like chucked in a deep end and sort of swim, you know what I mean? But Dean Byrne only beat me by a point, but I had a lot, a lot of like a lot of issues going off behind closed doors. Um regarding like an ex-missus and stuff like that. And um, I ended up serving some time in prison. Um like afterwards. Um saying I'm not particularly proud of my thing, but as the newspapers and everything like that say, you're only hear one side of the story there. So there was always, there was always, there's always three sides of the story. And then, but I, I believed I, I'm innocent and I'm not as what they made me, made me out to be. Um, I had a lot, I had a lot of issues um, going off between that. So then I went to jail, I come out of there. Um, and then I ended up moving, reestablishing myself down in Harlow in Essex. Um, I started fresh. I left all my old friends and everything like that up north, I moved away from my family. Like my family still live up there now. Like I ain't seen my family in like eight weeks now, probably longer. I've like since Christmas, I don't know how long that is. But yeah, I ain't seen my family since then. Um because I moved down here and I met I met a, a, I met a girl and I've known her dad since being about six years old. He was one of the boxing trainers at my old gym. I met her in the worst times and she stuck by me and um now we've got a beautiful little daughter. Um and then since then, now I found my st- stability in life, and I'm settled. Like I just feel like it's bringing out the best in my boxing career. So now I'm on four and a, four and a bounce. Uh, I'd like to be a bit more busy, but I end up getting Tesla cancer in the meantime. So yeah, I dropped a bollock, dropped a bollock that there. So I'm left yeah. with my left one now. Um, and then I come back from there. And since since coming back from there, I had two fights. I, um, in a short space of time I think one was September or October and then one was in December I was on a roll uh, I was meant to fight Sierra Roll School uh, and then I was sparring with Johnny Gart and I, and I caught a body shot uh, well, it, it, hit his, hit his, it went to throw a body shot and I caught his elbow and it broke my knuckle so that put me out of that fight that put me back for 13 weeks and then lockdown happened I went I went like, I've just literally like chilled out for a bit um, enjoyed a bit of normality um, and then I come back and they offered me a couple of fights. Um, but the fights they offered me, one was Harlem Eubank and he already boxed behind um, closed doors. So um, I just said, look, he's already experienced the situation. He knows the coup. I said, just let me get behind. Let me have one fight. I said, and we can get that cracking. I said, like, he's a great fighter and like me and him in a ring would be a great fight itself. Um, after, like, they didn't, they didn't want to get me on to their no, no thought being empty calvary at the minute they want views and they want things so having somebody who's just going to put me into that position where i'm able to um box i ain't going to get the views so um obviously i just wanted to get a ring rust off getting a feel for things and stuff like that um and then like from there's being a bit quiet then i got offered the florian marku fight on the december um i said yeah to it We've both said we all said, yeah, that's sweet. We was gonna get cracking with him. And then um I found out my my medicals all run out by literally about I think like a week or two. So uh yeah, I missed out on a great opportunity there boxing on Gianna card. So it just feels like I've been unlucky a little bit. And then I took a fight with a geezer called Darren Sur Surtez, um, number fifteen in the division. Unfortunately, Darren um ended up hurting his injuring his hand. So that um, took him out, and then um, they come with Billy Allerton. So we took the fight with Billy Allerton, and um, yeah, great, great fight, Billy Allerton. To be fair, he's had he's had eight wins. He's lost one. He's drew two. Like he's 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 drew against Scott Moises, who ain't a bad kid himself. He's a tall geezer, and he's a, he's a game journeyman. To be fair to him, um, and his only loss is against Danny Darko in a, in a title fight, a ten rounder. Um, so you got to pay him respects in ways. Um, and he's like, he, he lost, he lost that fight to Dan, uh, to Danny Darko. So yeah, you got to give him a, quite respect for that. He's not a bad kid.
What an interesting story, mate. I mean, you're really good to interview, by the way. You've answered a lot of my coming questions, which means I don't even know yeah. thought, which is good. Well done. Really interesting to find out. Like, I'm sorry that you had your problems. And I, I mean, I suppose everybody does have their problems, but you've had setback after setback, especially time going away inside. And whether you have done wrong or not is irrelevant. You served that time, you then back out. And then there was fights that were meant to happen that didn't through injury, stuff like that. But it sounds like you've been quite sensible waiting in those four fights that you've had since you've come back out, etc. You're building yourself back up and you're being linked with those names. So Eubank, Harlem Eubank, obviously the name itself, and he's a good fighter. And then obviously, as you mentioned, Florian Mark, who is making a lot of noise at the moment, just off the back of a fantastic fight against Dylan yeah. Dalton. A uh, really good fight the other week. I'm sure you watched that. So, well, that brings what I was going to then say was, what do you know about Billy? I mean, you're both Essex boys. He, he's around the corner in the gym in Epping. I, I don't know if he's actually from yeah. Epping, uh, actually, but he trains no, no. there. I don't know where he's from. I think oh, it sounds like he's an Essex. Uh, sounds like he's from East London, like with big old oh, his proper cockney voice and that. So I don't, I don't really know. Do you know? Uh, I've, I've had a look. Like, I was, like, I had a little flash look of him boxing Danny Darko, and I had a look at his box rec. But apart from that, I don't really watch too much of my opponent. I leave that all down to my trainer. Who I pay to do a job. So interesting. So, do, as your trainer, or you do you expect a certain style? I know you won't give much away about your game plan, and I wouldn't expect you to. But do you expect a certain style from Billy? Do you think he's going to come forward? Are you expecting him to try and box? Um. I don't think he's got it in him to come and fight with me because uh, I'm a big, big light welter. And uh, as soon as he starts feeling my power, I think he'll, um, he'll try and get on the back burner and sort of try and keep his way and nick, nick the fight. But um, I, I'm, I'm covered everywhere. Like I've, As an amateur, I had 66 amateur fights. I've boxed for my country. I've won gold medals. And like there ain't their style what I ain't seen. I spar with top boys. I've sparred, like, I spar with top boys all the time. Um so, yeah, he's nothing I wouldn't have seen. And to be fair, Billy's never boxed me and I've never boxed Billy. So, um, until you get in there and like you can always like, you can have always have a game plan until somebody gets punched in the face and that's it. Like, it's just one of them, isn't it? Like, he's, he's never boxed me. I've never boxed him, so it's pointless watching. Yeah, fair play. It looks like, again, and I, sat, I seem to say to everyone at the moment, like broken record, but it's another 50-50 fight on paper. You know, for somebody who just wants to look at records... You have had a few more defeats, but you've probably had a few more. To look at records, stuff like that. Listen, if they want to look at records, go and stand next to a DJ booth, like because <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But exactly nothing. Spot on. It, it looks like it will be a good 50-50. One thing I was going to ask you, you've actually fought on some big cards. So I wondered if you thought, yeah. Billy's had some good fights as well. I don't think he's fought on some televised as high as you. Maybe sort of, I think Kelbrook, you was on that card. You was on a Chris Eubank Jr. card. Um, do you think maybe that experience might hold you in good stead come Friday night? I boxed on some very good cards. Um, very grateful for like the people who's managed to open their doors for me. And be on, to be on stage, he's been on the end shows and that. Um I boxed on the. I was meant to box on the Kelbrook and Jesse Vargas thing. We sold a. I, I sold eight hundred and thirty tickets. I was nearly hitting a thousand tickets before. Um, oh, sorry, mate. That's right. And, and happens all the time, mate. No, right. no coming through. Um, yeah, I was meant to box on that, and then Kelbrook broke his ribs, so that called the fight off. But yeah, I did eight hundred and something tickets with it uh, against the Teeth. That fight was amazing. Like even even just even I didn't get the decision. The experience I picked up through it, and it being a being a being walking out to an arena, and I was just like, "Wow, there's so many people here!" And mm. then you jumping in the ring, you're having a war, and everybody remembers you for like sort of a loss. Really, it ain't very good because I used to I finished the fight, and I was like, "Like, fucking, I've lost to me." Like, it meant it broke me up, but like everyone was gassed and like, "Oh, you've been in such amazing a fight." So, what I want now is I want to be remembered to be. You know, in like a winning fight, not not to be remembered for a, like a loss where I got off to the canvas and I nearly had a teeth out of there. And if there was another two rounds and he'd have been out of there and I'd have got him out of there, like, um, and then I got steam burn off at the back of, off the back of that. So my confidence was a bit knocked, but at the same time, I jumped in with the geese with Dean Burn. Like, Dean Burn at that time, he was an awkward, awkward customer. He just he just did eight rounds of like David Avician. Mm -hmm. uh, just who beat Kelly the other week so like he's a tough operator I had a draw against Carson Jones um, he was he was over in America his chief sparring partner Manny Pacquiao so what he brought to the table when you hit when you hit somebody normally they show facial expressions they hit them it was like hitting a brick wall his face did not change and like to be in a situation like that and you're so used to boxing these kids with poor faces and you try and roll like thing Dean Byrne don't do none of that 
So to experience that as well um, was like is another tick off my box, and I ca- and I coped with well. I thought I finished strong. I thought I, well, I thought I actually won the fight by one or two rounds. I come back to the end of the corner at the end of the fourth round. They said you're winning the fight. Come back after the fifth, and they're saying you're losing your fight. I've just won the fifth round. So I was getting mixed mixed signals or what's happening. So then the sixth round, I'm chasing after him. I thought I won like four rounds out of the six. Um, so then like obviously I've come out of that, I've ended up coming back against a, a Bulgarian kid, uh, Mitev. He was a, to be fair, he was, he was a tough little geezer. He was a very tough little geezer. Um, he took it. And then I boxed a kid called Blackwell. Um, he, he was... Just to be fair, it was just like stepping, not not being horrible, like thingy, being rude about it. But yeah. he, he got blown away quickly. Like as soon as I touched him around his belly, he was out of there. But um, and then I boxed a little Nicaraguan fella, and I boxing him, and I perforated my eardrum in the third round. So every time I went to throw my punches and like punches in bursts, which I which I'm like I'm a high work rate. I like to punch in like in bursts, and um. And when I work at a very, very high work rate, I like to be like that's what I like. I like to have a fight. Um, and I perforate me here, so I had to change tactics through the fight while I'm disorientated and that, which is very it was weird. Like I was like swaying, it felt like my body was swaying as I was punching, going to throw punches. So it, it completely took me off my game. But I managed to get through, I managed to win all six rounds. And then uh, I boxed the uh, Daryl Pierce last. Yeah, I just I ended up playing around with him, just working behind a jab, just fine going through like going through a little bit of gears, and then in the last round I tried tried taking him out, but he just by that time he was he was just running, he was like he didn't let me set up nothing. But going back to the story of the moral of the story is how much experience you pick up. I picked up a lot. Like mm-hmm. First, first this is gonna be my sixteenth fight, but from what I have experienced, I've experienced being being dropped, I've experienced being cut, I've experienced being in a situation with a geezer who's got so much experience where you hit him and it doesn't bother him. I've experienced being in with somebody so fast that it was it, it was hard to get near him and he was so ne- he was so negative as soon as they'll come near him you're throwing shots and then moving away and it was it was hard to get near him. And I heard he was getting the top end of sparring of some very, very good kids at that time. He was on form. Um so yeah I've experienced a lot I've experienced a lot as a as a as a 15 fight pro. Well, this, this, this just shapes you for what you are. And like you said, all this stuff, you've really talked through it really well that will get you hopefully where you need to get for Friday night. So look, well, we're looking, before I let you go, the fight, is the fight a welterweight or light welter? Is it light welterweight, super lightweight? Um, I think, I think I, I don't know, but I think Billy's, Billy's put it up. He's a Southern Area Eliminator or something like this. Um, to be fair, I don't, I, I don't really want to mess around with the Southern Area, not being ignorant to the title or that, but... I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm where they like English is or like fractions away from the British. Like I wouldn't. I, I don't feel like I'm out of my depth with like Sam Maxwell or Akeem Brown. I wouldn't be out of my depth with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I like. I believe in myself, and I just feel like I've been. I've had the short straw in a couple of my fights, and, and sort of just wrong fights, wrong time. But now nah, I'm coming through. I've got a wicked trainer in Mickey Burke. I've got a wicked uh, team behind me, MTK Global, who have the or, or they have the power to um, open a lot of doors for me and give me a, a great opportunities. Um, and a strength and conditioner who's like who's who's made me go from strength to strength and like. I've just got the best team of people around me. Like, mm, good. Well, look, good luck for the uh, fight on Friday. Um, I'm sure the two of you are going to serve up a classic, and then you can start looking forward afterwards. We'll pick up with you and see where maybe you, who you're going to get out next. All right, safe journey up to yeah. Bolton on Wednesday, bud. Yeah. yeah. I like to just give a shout out to all my sponsors because obviously through the pandemic and stuff like that, it's been very hard. But yeah. Like, definitely. I've got I've got a good good six or seven sponsors. They jumped on board and. Um, they really helped me out through this through this time. Who are uh, they? One's got a complete still, uh, a, com- a, a little cafe called Cruises up in Chesterfield, uh, Fab Works in Chesterfield, First Choice Drainage. Uh, they've been with me from the start. Uh, first, um, Haynes Haynes Day. Oh, they they've, they've they've sponsored me as well again. Um, Box Fit. Sponsored me. Uh, Lorenzo sorted me some gar- like some loads of clothes out and stuff yeah. like that. He looks up well. Um, who else? 
I've got about literally about eight or nine. I'm sorry if I've missed any of them out, but like they all hang up in out. a minute and it will come straight to your head. It always does. Yeah, that one, yeah, yeah. But no, look, they've all helped me out and uh, they'll all be on my kit and show them, show them like hopefully get the win on get the win on Friday, which I've trained hard for, and I believe I'm more than capable of getting rid of Billy Allen and um, making a good statement and showing the world what I am really about. Good and stuff, I think he's mate. the right. So. Good luck to you, and we'll catch you after the fight. Cheers, Jamie. Oh, Thanks, well, thank you. Enjoy the video. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, entitled betting shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.